Sometimes it's useful to be able to turn a feature on or off in different environments, especially if you want to test something in a test environment and maybe not have it turned on in production yet. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to talk through feature flags. You bet. And as is always the case, we start with a very fancy application here, my web application 26, which just started out as a standard Razor Pages application. And now I've added a fancy new feature that I would like to push out to my, my test environment, but maybe not yet to my production environment. And all it does is it on my home page here, it lists out a series of new recent posts to some sort of news service. Uh, the implementation is pretty straightforward. Under the index page, um, I'm just listing out the recent posts, and in the code for that, I'm accessing those recent, getting those recent posts using my blog service. All right, so I'd like to hide this behind something called the feature flag that I just have the ability to turn on and off based on what environment I'm in. So there's actually a, a really handy package for that that's available from Microsoft. So we're going to go to new, manage our NuGet packages here, and we're going to install our Microsoft.FeatureManagement package. So we'll select the ASP.NET Core version of that here, which is essentially just the, there's the core piece if you're not specifically in an ASP.NET Core application. Um, you can install that. Uh, this package here adds some tag helpers, which we'll see. It allows us to like toggle things in the in the razor page part of the application. Nice. Okay, so we've added that, and now what we want to do is define a feature flag. Now that we have our package available, so the feature flag is just I'm going to create an enum just as a a way to reference a feature. Uh, so I'm going to call that my feature flags for this application. That's a quality name for that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to create a feature here called recent posts. OK. Easy enough. Now what I'm going to do is, over in the code behind here for my page, or in my page model, I'm going to wrap this logic here in a feature flag. So I, if I have the feature turned off, I don't want to actually interact with the blog service and incur the cost of making the call. So to do that, what I do is I'm just going to inject something called my feature manager. Which is part of that feature management package. Do a control dot here to create my property, my private field. And then what I do is anytime I want to basically decide whether I'm going to run the code or not based on whether the feature flag is enabled, I just call feature manager dot, uh, I forget the name of the, is enabled. enabled, that's the one I was looking for. And I pass it in the name of the feature that I want, which I'm just going to use that feature flags dot recent posts. That's an async method, so I have to await it. And then I'll just wrap this in an if statement. With the appropriate number of closing braces. And of course I need to make this method async now since it's awaited. Okay. Or I have to change on get to on get async to. I don't think I actually have to. Think oh really? I think it works. No fine. way. Yeah. Oh, I wow, guess we'll find out. This. That's, oh, that's how it works for me. Extra the letters for no reason. Oh, I'm super excited for this. Okay, let's do it. And then the only other thing I need to do in here is when I'm configuring my services, I need to actually register the feature management stuff. So let's just add feature management. Simon, just think of all those, all that time you've lost typing those five characters. Oh, it's true. You know, this one and the fact that in SQL Server, you don't have to write begin transaction, just write begin trans. Right? Tran. Oh, yeah. Tran, yeah, yeah. So it saves me so much time. <laughs> okay, so I have my feature management registered. 
I'm injecting it into the page model, and then we're going to do the check here. I might as well set a breakpoint just to see. So I haven't actually, in configuration, defined whether something whether the feature is enabled or not. So the default with this library is that if you haven't specifically defined that it's enabled, then the feature is considered to be disabled. So if I run this, loading, if I step over this carefully. Yeah, I'll, yeah just don't press F10. No. OK. So it, that returned false, and we skip this. And I actually expect this to crash now. It's going to go boom, because now inside my eraser page, I'm trying to access that recent posts, trying to iterate over it, and it's now null because we haven't set it. That's fine. I kind of alluded to the solution here is that we, the ASP.NET Core version of this package actually exposes some tag helpers. We just need to register them. So registering tag helpers, you do in the view imports here. And I'm just going to say add the tag helpers from this feature management.aspnet core package. And then in here, I now have this handy dandy feature toggle tag helper, where all I need to do is give it the name of the feature that I'm wanting to toggle based on. So again, here I'm just going to do name of feature flags dot recent posts. Okay, so now basically none of this razor, this section of the razor page will get rendered if this feature is turned off. Uh, continue. There we go. We proceed without on. errors. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Can you go back to the definition of feature flags not recent recent posts? Yep. Okay. So the one thing that I like about this and um, so feature flags. I mean, and hey, I gotta say, as cool as this feature is, it still hasn't appeared on Dr. Sheldon Cooper and Dr. Amy Farrah Fowler present Dr. Sheldon Cooper's fun with flags. So I'm not sure this is real yet, but. Um, I, the one thing that I like about this, and, and we've all done, you know, feature flag development before. The nice thing about this is if, if you comment out recent posts, it's pretty discoverable in terms of breaking the build. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now you know where, where that feature flag is being used. So that's yeah. a pretty, that's, that's better than, you know, I've seen string based approaches in the fa in the past and stuff like that. And this tends to work better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know that Chance and I have worked on projects that use feature flags and we get to this point where we're like, we've got like 30 feature flags enabled. And we're like, oh, we really should refactor this and take those out. And it's difficult to hunt them all down everywhere. So the one thing we didn't talk about yet is how you actually enable the feature. So uh, by default, what when we did that add, add feature management, what it's going to do is check for a section in your config called feature flags. And then uh, to turn it on, you just Define a define the feature here and just set it to true or false depending on when you whether you want it enabled. So now when I run this, I should get my posts on the main page. Assuming I spelt everything correctly, which I did not. The default no, is feature yeah. management, not feature flags. Computers are so picky. They really are. If they could just learn to understand what I meant to say, instead of what I actually said. That would be a really amazing application of AI. There we go. Just developer intent. So nice. Now it's off or on. And if I restart with the flag set to false, it will it should disappear. So that now it becomes really easy. You know, in my app settings.production, I could have it false, but in my app settings.staging, I could have it true. So Very nice. this is just getting started with feature flag, feature man this feature management library. There's actually a lot more than just on off, and we'll kind of explore some of these other uh, variations of how you define whether or not a feature is available. There's actually you can set up time windows so that a feature only mm -hmm. turns on for a specified period of time, which is really cool if you have like. Uh, 
say something that you want to turn on that's just for Black Friday, for example, and you know exactly the time that you want that feature to turn on and when you want it to turn back off again, you would be able to. Ooh, I have another that. example of that. I remember when I went to university, we had an online registration system that would turn off at 5 p.m. Yeah. Because computers needed to sleep mm -hmm. and get home to their wives. It's a perfect husbands. example. Yeah. It's it's also like manual life. If you go to file a claim, their online claim self service function is only available during business hours. So it shuts off your claims if it's outside of nine and four. Oh, this, is, this is a great application. You guys are coming up with the worst examples of what you should use. This. <laughs> Another one is a percentage filter where you can tell it. Uh, this is more for like A-B testing, so you might turn it on for half right. the users and kind of see how that's going. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to talk about, which we'll do in another episode, is how this ties into the Azure App Config service that we've been talking about. Um, because that's actually pretty cool then, because you can start turning things on and off at runtime, and you don't need to deploy new settings to your application. You can just toggle these features on and off um, at runtime. You can also turn them on only for specific users, I believe there's the ability to do that too. So there's lots to explore here, which we'll do in future episodes. Cool. I look forward to it. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you everybody for joining us on another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. Remember to like, comment, and toggle on your share feature. We'll see everybody later. Bye. Cheers.